What's up, guys? <laughs> We're in Denver, Colorado at Muscle Activation Technique Headquarters. I'm here with the creator of Muscle Activation Techniques. You've likely heard myself and uh, Big Ben Bukowski talk about MAT for the last four or five years. Uh, this has been a game changer to helping us build our bodies safely and uh, without getting banged up like most guys do in the gym. I'm here with the creator, Greg Roscoff. And um, in this video, we just want to talk about how to build muscle and strength. We're not going to talk about the things you typically look for when you're looking to build muscle and strength in terms of, you know, training program, nutrition, supplement stacks, mindset. Uh, we're just going to let Greg talk to you about the most important thing that you have when you go to the gym if you want to build your body. And that's, you know, the ability to contract muscle. And Greg, maybe you can just tell newbies what MAT is all about. So, so basically, muscle activation techniques um, evaluates um, the ability for muscles to contract efficiently. Because whenever we have stress, trauma, or overuse to the muscles, the resultant inflammation alters the communication between the brain and the muscles. So the muscles just can't fire as efficiently as they're designed to fire. And when they can't fire that efficiently, they can't do their job to stabilize joints and, and protect us from injury. And so. Uh, we always look at the idea that life's going to beat us up. I mean, we're working out, we're, we're beating our bodies up in, in the weight room, and, and really somebody's got to be there to put you back together. And muscle activation techniques does that. It basically says, I mean, what was the end result of, of the workout and how much damage did that place on the muscle system? And if these, if these issues aren't addressed, then the, the, the damage or the weaknesses that occur in the muscle system set us up for injury. Exercise breaks us down. So exercise actually starts a downward spiral that eventually lead, can potentially lead to injury, which in turn prevents us from getting the results we're trying to achieve relative to overall health. So muscle activation techniques basically addresses that issue. That as we have stresses on the muscle system, the muscles lose their ability to contract efficiently. And when muscles lose the ability to contract efficiently, they lose the ability to shorten. And so basically they lose the ability to move through their full range of motion. And when they lose the ability to shorten, the opposite muscles lose the ability to lengthen. So those muscles actually show up as being tight. And many times in the exercise and health industry, we always focus on the tightness. Well, the reason you have back pain is because your hamstrings are tight or, or uh, your hip flexors are tight. So we focus on the tightness. With muscle activation techniques, it's saying that tightness is a, is a result of the opposite muscles' inability to contract efficiently. So it's, start, it's part of the body's protective mechanism. So you think about it from a neurological standpoint, is an easy correlation is what do you do when you walk on ice? The first thing you do when you walk on ice is you tighten up as a protective mechanism. So the natural neurological response is when the body senses instability, it, the body tightens up as a protective mechanism. And so in the same manner, when muscles lose their ability to contract efficiently, the body, sent, the nervous system senses that instability and it creates a protective tightening to protect you from injury. So with muscle activation techniques, we use tightness as an indicator of weakness. So we take a completely different approach to, to improving, body, um, improving muscle function or, or overall body function. It's saying that we want to identify these weak links because if we can identify and correct these weak links, then we can improve your body's ability to tolerate forces, to lift more weights without injuring yourself. And so the whole idea, if you're trying to get maximum uh, gains in strength and endurance and, and get the most effective um, benefits from your workout, you have to have, all, basically your muscle system has to be working at a high level. So that idea that exercise is break, can break us down is the idea that somebody's got to be there to put you back together so you can continue to go through this two step forward, one step back process that in the end result, you reach your long term goal of, of uh, high performance. You know, can I tell you something, Greg? I don't think I told you this. So, you know, prior to MAT, you know, I used to spend a fortune on, M uh, sorry, massage therapy and ART. I haven't spent a penny on massage or ART in five years because I always had that, okay, I did a leg workout, my lower back's tight, I go to see the massage therapist and I say, hey, I need a massage on my lower back. It had nothing to do with my lower back, as it, you just explained. So exactly. MAT has <laughs> fixed the root problem, which is a huge game-changing like, discovery for me. Yeah, and a lot of times that's a, that's a perfect statement because um, we find, I mean, he complained or just recognized that, uh, relax, that his back was tightening up 
And uh, so then we have to say, well, why, is, why did the back tighten up in his workout? And most of the time with conventional injury, we focus on that area. We massage the back, we do deep tissue work, uh, stretch the, the muscles of the spine. When actually through this process, we're able to identify which muscles um, actually went weak. I would say, I don't care what you can do, I wanna know what you can't do, because what you can't do is breaking you down. So his glutes actually got overstressed in the process of the workout, which created the, back t the, the tightness in the back. So we're going to the root cause. So remember, a, when, when muscles go weak, um, they lose their ability to contract into the shortened range. So I just took him into the shortened range of hip extension, which is basically the shortened position of the glutes, and, uh, and I applied a light force, and he couldn't resist that force. That's saying there's an inefficiency of contraction in the gluteus maximus. And so now through a, a stimulation technique, I'm palpating and stimulating the origin and insertion of the muscles to increase the, the sensory reception, and basically tighten battery cables with the idea that when the brain can't send the message to the muscles, the muscles can't fire efficiently. You use the simple analogy of like having loose battery cables on your car. The brain sends a message, the message doesn't get to the glutes. MAT, the whole role of MAT is to tighten battery cables. So I just stimulated the muscles through palpating the origin and insertion, and I come back, hold up, and I take him into that shortened range, and now he can resist the force in that shortened range, and I can really push as hard as I want, and he can resist that force. You can actually feel the glutes contract. Yeah, so now, Crazy. yeah, and that's that connection, the tightened battery cables where the brain now is in direct connection with the glutes, so now we've reprogrammed um, the, the nervous system. We've basically tied the, the muscle back into um, functional movement. So then as I come to the other side, we have the same issue. I just apply a light force and he can't resist it. So imagine trying to, re we say we're training our glutes when we squat and uh, or the glutes are under significant amounts of load when we squat and he can't even resist about 10 pounds of force that I'm applying. So, so Sorry to cut you off, but I think this is gonna be a, a, a huge discovery for everyone watching. As you see girls and guys who do these crazy quad workouts, squat workouts, but they've got a flat ass. Yes. So, so I think this starts explaining to people, well, I'm training that muscle, at least I think I am, yet I've got a flat ass. Right. It doesn't make sense. Or I'm training my quads, but I've got, you know, chicken legs. Like, so where is it, go where is it where's it happening? Where's the tension going? Yeah, so that idea that we're, we're only as strong as our weakest link, I mean, the body will get from point A to point B most effectively with what it has to work with. So when you have weaknesses like this, the body's going to be forced to compensate for those weaknesses. So the load is going to be transferred into areas of strength. And so you may, the, the load may transfer away from the glutes into the quads and hamstrings or into the lower back, which i.e. is his back muscles were tightening up. So you end up putting the load into areas that you don't even think you're trying to train. And the more isolated we get, if you think of, if you look at people that work out and some people that are benching all the time and they got huge pecs, and then somebody else comes in that's working out all the time and benching all the time and, they, and their shoulders are huge but they got flat pecs. It's because the body's figuring out how to pull in other muscles to make up for the weakness. So the body shifts and compensates and puts the load into other muscles. So you may think you're training your pecs, but if, the, if you have this uh, disconnect between the nervous system and the muscle system, the load's gonna go to the muscles that can fire and fire on demand. Those are the ones that are going to grow. And that's why we create, that's why we get imbalances when we work out, is because we think we're training something and we're not. Muscles move bones, and muscles hold bones in proper alignment. When muscles lose the ability to contract efficiently, they lose the ability to move bones into the position that the structure dictates they can move into, and then they also lose the ability to stabilize joints, which sets us up for potential injury. So the whole goal is to say we don't want to sacrifice um, stability by gaining mobility. We want to use the stability or increase ability for muscles to contract so that you can actually increase mobility. So without stretching for five years, you will actually increase range of motion if all the muscles are properly, uh, properly activated and then properly trained through their full ranges of motion. And when I say that about training muscles through their full range of motion, let's use the glutes as an example. Uh, Vince's glutes uh, got overloaded in his workout today. They showed up as being weak. 
And um, so we think about how do you properly train your glutes or what's the most effective way that you can um, improve the strength and mass of, of, your, of your glutes. We think we do squats, we do lunges, we do leg press. I mean, there's a step ups, there's a lot of exercise that we would say this is actually putting the focus on our glutes. But if you think about it, if a muscle, if when the glutes shorten, they bring the leg into hip extension. So I've just shortened the, the glute here. I've approximated the origin insertion and it's creating a belly, um, a, a belly effect in the glute. So same way that I flex my elbow and my, my bicep balls up. Um, when I shorten or, or bring the, the, if he was to lift his leg, we're going to see a balling up of, of the glute. That's the shortened position. And you think about those exercises that I mentioned, squats, deadlifts, uh, step up, and we say we're loading the glutes and not one of those muscles bring us into hip extension. So when we squat, we may be, I mean literally we may still be in an anterior pelvic tilt position. When we lunge, we actually come out and load the glute in a hip flex position. And we think how many exercises do we actually do to train the glute under load into its shortened range? So. Um, isolated glute strengthening is a key factor that's going to transfer over to your ability to squat, your ability to lunge, your ability to um, load the glutes and other exercises. So we kind of take a shift of we need to get the muscles activated, but then we have to train them through their full ranges of motion. And one of the things Vince and I talked about is that's his focus in, in training is more toward isolated movements. That he's training each muscle group to, to isolate them. And in order to isolate them, you actually have to train them into their shortened position or their extreme range. So it kind of gives you a focus as how can you get the most out of your muscles? By training them through their full ranges of motion. Wow, great. Where can people um, find an MAT therapist? We got people from all over the world who watch this channel here. so. Yeah, so we've trained trainers and therapists across the country. You can actually go to our website um, and go under a finding your specialist and you can find a local practitioner in your area. And, uh, and I think Vince and I have talked about this. This is something that, I mean, if you're training and you're training at a high level, um, you need to, you're gonna break your body down and you need to have somebody there monitoring you and putting you back together. And from a neuromuscular standpoint, as muscle activation technique specialists, that's what we do. We put you back, to, you put you back together from a muscular standpoint or a muscle function standpoint, so you can continue to increase your performance level and reduce the risk of injury. So I would recommend uh, everyone finding a muscle activation technique specialist in their area and getting on a program to tie it in with their workouts. Yeah, guys, it's essentially, you know, for me, a lot of you guys have seen me build my body with what I like to call baby weights, and it's really as simple as MAT switching tissue on so that I can actually load it. So the tension is actually going into the muscle I want to build. So, you know, if you have a lagging body part that's not growing that you're training it, there's a very high chance that you're not, it's just not turned on and you need MAT and it's not something you can do to yourself. So, great. Thank you so much, man. We'll put a link in the description um, and a link up on the annotation there for you guys to um, contact your uh, local MAT therapist and include this into your uh, monthly regime. You got to have an MAT therapist on your team. This is by far the best money that I invest in to myself each and every month and it's game changing. It's going to add years and years to your lifting career. So it's going to help you build muscle into your 40s. Like great, you're 53. You look insane, man. Like <laughs> he's getting better with age. We talked about that yesterday. I know this video is getting long, but this will help you get better and bigger and stronger with age. Yes. It shouldn't be the other way around. So if there was a true anti-aging program, this is, this is it. From a muscular standpoint, this is what helps keep the body healthy as we get older. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.